Every Fish Creek followed by Sherwood Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday we revealed that a quarter million dollar contract was awarded to an AHS executive the day after she retired. The contract wasn't tendered but simply handed to her, no questions asked. Records show that the company set up by this exec was established on August 4, 2011, while she was still an AHS employee. Of course, doing business with the current employee is a no-no, so AHS waited until the clock struck midnight on quailing date before giving her the contract. Has the minister taken the time to review this information? Does he share Albertans concerns? And if so, what are you going to do to fix it? Honourable Minister of Health. Well, Mr. Speaker, what I don't share and what my colleagues don't share is uh, conjecture and a rush to judgment about either the value of someone's work or the circumstances under which they acquired that work. Mr. Speaker, we start from the position that uh, there are rules in place and that those rules have been observed. I have inquired about this situation with the uh, Office of the uh, Official Administrator, and I'm waiting to hear from him, but I want to be very, very clear, Mr. Speaker, these honourable members have presented ac exactly no evidence to suggest that anything here is untoward. First supplemental. <clears throat> Pardon me. Oh, Minister, just read the FOIP. Given that yesterday, in response to our question, AHS didn't deny the fact, they didn't apologize, in fact, they vigorously defended it because, shockingly, shockingly, the contract was apparently awarded in full compliance with policy. Does the minister agree that a policy that allows the gifting of a quarter million dollars to an executive who retired the day before is a pretty shoddy policy that needs to be revised? Yeah. Mr. Speaker, what I, what I will say, and as I indicated, I'm in some discussion now with the official administrator about this, but what, what I did learn yesterday that I think all members would be interested in is that $200 million of that $250 million in consulting contracts was for IT systems, Mr. Speaker. IT systems that consolidated the former health regions into one that saved this organization $660 million in administrative savings over a similar period. I think that's a pretty good return on investment, Mr. Speaker. Final supplemental. I'll tell you what a good return on investment on your IT is. Wait till we bring forward the whistleblower. Here, here. Given that reports say the same former executive still has executive con uh, coaching contracts on the book, does the minister actually believe executive co coaching is a priority for Albertans? Here, here. What I believe, Mr. Speaker, is that we have a responsibility as elected representatives not to use this chamber uh, to besmirch the reputation of any employee, whether they're a senior executive or frontline staff, not to uh, run roughshod with conjecture about policies and procedures that obviously the questioner doesn't understand. As I said, Mr. Speaker, I've inquired with the official administrator about this uh, uh, particular contract. I will satisfy myself as minister that the appropriate rules have, uh, have been followed in this case, and I thank the Honourable Member not to use this chamber inappropriately for that purpose.